Hey there Poetry Pals, welcome back to another video. This week, I'm going to Verve Poetry Festival. Oh god, it's so hot. Yo, 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 what's up? This is Voice Over Josie. I went up on the Thursday and stayed for the whole festival. Now, technically, the first event of the festival was the Wednesday evening before, but it was an event that involved school children. I can't remember whether it was a slam or an open mic, but basically there were kids. And because I was planning on vlogging the whole thing, I didn't want to turn up with a camera and be at a school children event so I decided not to and not to mention because I was staying for the whole weekend and had to pay for my accommodation it meant I could save a whole night of accommodation and I was on a budget so decided for the Thursday I decided that I should probably let my setting spray dry so I decided that I wanted to head up to um, Verve Poetry Festival. I've never been before. Last year, I bought their online catch-up ticket where I paid like £15 and was able to watch all of the events that had been filmed, which was most of them. And I caught up with loads. It was amazing. But this year, obviously, I'm getting published with it by them in a couple of weeks. So I wanted to go up and support the festival and see a little bit about what they've done. It's been ages since I went to Birmingham for poetry as well. So I got into contact with my publisher, got myself some tickets and I'm going up to stay. I've got myself into a hostel. I'm getting the coach up. So we're doing this on a budget. So yeah, come with me, shall we? So here's all the things I need to pack. We've got outfits, for tomorrow, I'm not taking my cat. She's just had a biopsy on her eyelid. So we're being very nice to her. Um, jumpers, socks, pants, pajamas, all of that. Do I take my knitting? I've got my meds, I've got my um, makeup. I'm actually really nervous about this. It's my first time sort of going away by myself in a little while and I've got to like get public transport and weirdly I'm nervous about it. So I swear I'm a grown up. <laughs> right, let's get packing. Viewer, I did take the knitting as well as two books. The first one being Small Machine by Be Demi Anta, um, who gave me a coffee copy as she wants me to review it and um so that will be coming soon keep an eye out and the other one i brought with me was the tower by a korean author whose name i will make pop up on screen now but i was so busy all weekend i didn't end up knitting or reading so these were pointless to pack something to bear in mind if you're going to go to verve next year smile and wave I was so nervy about missing my bus that Trey drove me into town and even filmed me walking into the bus station for the vlog. What an absolute hero. I ended up clutching a little bit of the Bristol light show and then settled in to wait for the bus, which ended up being half an hour late. I'm told this is pretty good when it comes to coaches, but all the same, it made me really nervous. Then we finally got going at exactly half past two, but left behind the bus that was behind that was going next. Side note, National Express coaches are actually really comfortable. The journey up, I listened to a po couple of podcasts and carried on with my audiobook. I tried to do some writing, but my handwriting on a bus is terrible and it made me travel sick. By the way, I downloaded two new audiobooks from BorrowBox and I spent the weekend listening to Reasons To Be Cheerful by Nina Stibb. It's like low-key charming. I've actually just finished it and love it i arrived in birmingham only 10 minutes later than scheduled so shout out to the driver who managed to gain 20 minutes on the motorway i decided to get the steps in and walk to my hostel and i walked past that building that looks like metal bubble wrap and for some reason always reminds me of that got kwan show that was on in the noughties after a 20 minute walk i got to my hostel and checked in the corridor to my room felt like a scene from a horror movie and was flickering like this the whole weekend. Don't worry though, I didn't die. I dropped my stuff off and decided to walk to the venue to get my bearings and I stopped off for a Starbucks. Duly caffeinated and snacked up, I arrived at the venue and found myself a seat. The first event was the Rathbones Folio Prize shortlist hosted by Jackie Kay. We saw performances from each of the poets 
It was interesting to see the range of performance styles from poetry and dance with Sophia to very much poetry reading vibes. There was a section for Q&A afterwards and it was great to hear about people's writing as well as how research contributed to their collections. Super interesting. I ended up buying Cane Corn and Gully by Sophia because we are good buds and I've been meaning to get it for a while. She signed it and told me to let my inner Spice Girl roar. I can't wait to get into it and comment down below if you want me to review it for my channel. Next up was the Verve Poetry Night special. Each quarter Verve Poetry Press put on a night hosted by my good pal and all round poetry daddy, Sam Grudgings. For those who don't know, I am your host. We are a night. There will be poems. Who here has been not only to a Verve Poetry Night, has been to this poetry night and liked it so much they traveled all the way back in time creating a paradox which they must relent and go, I'm not going to stop myself, I know I'm sat in the third row and then I'm in the fourth row as well, but if I reach over and touch myself, the universe will collapse, but I love poetry so much, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that, that's what I needed, thank you. There was an open mic and I performed, here you are. So my poem's quite short, so I'm going to take a moment to say that it's from my upcoming Verve Poetry Press collection. Woo! Yeah, beach. Um, it's out next month and you can pre-order it on my website. You can pre-order it through Verve as well, but pre-order it through my website. Sorry, Verve. Okay, uh, this is the last poem I wrote that went into the collection. The collection is about my dad dying. Um, he died five years ago. And this is the poem that I wrote back in December. And it's called Portrait of Widmouth Bay as an un Unending Apocalypse. They are planting Christmas trees in Cornish sand dunes to stop the ocean from reclaiming ground. Far away ice is already melting. She is rising with the heat and a few misplaced trees will not stop her. We try anyway, in the hope that pines used to mountains dig deep and find purchase in the uncertainty of sand, take root in a collection of broken things. Five years came whiplash fast. The beach is a different shape now. In the darkness of winter, we visit the spot where we scattered him, raised hosts, give gifts and decorate the branches. We try our best to protect the, di the dying wood from the violence of wet. Try to stop the world moving quite so fast. Thank you. After the performance, um, a load of my friends hadn't eaten, so we went out for um, drink and some food. We ended up going to this Greek restaurant it was great and also those dips were so moorish I could have sat there with the teaspoon legit anyway Sam didn't have anywhere to stay that night he was meant to stay at a friend's but he ended up getting a room at my hostel and he stayed for breakfast with me here he is looking super beautiful you're such a twat. <laughs> then I spent the rest of the morning uh, working. The events didn't start until later in the afternoon. So I did a bit of work and edited the first part of my video. If only I was this proactive throughout the rest of the day. That my time there by editing each day as I went that would have been way better but I didn't so that is why this video is late. So one of the things that uh i decided to do was get a gym membership uh i know this doesn't really sound like a josie thing to do but um the couple of weeks before the festival my mental health had been going a little bit wobbly and i realized one of the things i hadn't been doing was exercising going to a city that i didn't know made me a little bit nervous about continuing my couch to 5k around the city um especially like I would hands down get lost. So I decided to get a three day gym pass to Pure Gym. So anyway, I did my couch to 5K. Uh, here's me like walking and feeling myself. And then I started running. Exercising inside is actually pretty convenient, it turns out. <laughs> here's a little tour of my room. 
Uh, this was the only time I could get it without anyone in there. So that was my little bed, super cute. So then I scoot scooted to the venue and as I was going in, I realized that there was a vigil going on outside and it took a little while to work out what it was for, but it was for Brianna Gay. Uh, so instead of joining the poetry event, I decided to join the vigil. There was someone giving out candles, so I stayed and I listened to the speakers and a few of the speakers actually performed their poems in reaction to this event. So I felt like I was still getting my poetry and I didn't feel guilty about skipping the poetry festival at all so eventually i did go in and i joined an event already in progress and i basically missed all of the performances and was just in time for the q a so all of the events only had half an hour in between which weren't enough time to get a full meal so instead i'd planned very well and got myself a meal deal and snuck it into my bag so this is me in the gap between the events where they were signing their books and then I was like sneaking out a sandwich. During the break is when I bumped into some pals and we sat together for the poetry film event. This is me enjoying some of the free popcorn they gave out. But I just wanted to say here that the poetry film event was really cool and it really opened my eyes to the possibilities of what can happen when you combine poems with films. And I just want to say a big shout out to everyone whose films were featured in that event. I really enjoyed it. So yeah, thank you so much for this event it was awesome i ended up walking back with jasmine gardosi who uh lives in a similar area so we could walk part of the way home together and this is me arriving outside my hostel selena. by the way shout out to any drag race fans because my hostel was called selena and i kept i could not top stop saying selena estes whenever i brought it up and no one at the poetry festival knew that i was referencing season 15 of drag race so yeah that's my cross to bear but yeah i arrived back at my hostel selena stds <laughs> so the next day i had breakfast big shout out to this coffee shop in selena which still had pumpkin spiced syrup which was delicious i just uh did my wellness diary and had a little snip snuck some um hot cross buns it was wonderful and then it was back to the gym so this was the saturday i decided to go back to the gym and this was great because i was able to watch drag race i only filmed a little bit of my run because i was watching drag race on my phone whilst on the treadmill another point to be made for exercising indoors i was in a really big rush to get back to the festival for the first event and someone was in the shower so i couldn't shower so this is me putting on a very sweaty face of makeup um and trying my best to look like a normal human being but let me tell you i spent the rest of the day feeling absolutely rancid um <laughs> If you see me looking over my shoulder, that was because the girls who didn't really come out of the room, this was her first time being out of her bed and she spent the whole time with her hair dryer on. But I don't know if you saw her in the background, but she had dry hair when she got into that bed, which anyway, whatever. I got did my makeup very simply, got my shit together and scooted back down to the venue. This is me arriving at the venue. Um, yeah, I tried to put a stabilizer on and this is what happened. So uh, do you know what? I'm gonna leave it wobbling because I think it's quite fascinating. So you go in the side entrance of the Hippodrome because we're not in like the main bit, we're on the side. And at the front, there were all these, uh, the volunteers were with the things and she said, hi. Um, and then you sort of walk around the stairs to the main bit where they have the book book shop bit and then you have the workshoppers going in the, the main venue in there. That's where I spotted Adelia and I tried to wave to her but she was clearly in the zone. Um, and then I walked in for the first event of the day, which was the poetry lecture. This is basically when they get a a poet or an academic to come in and sort of 
do a performance slash a lecture to inform on their work. Um, and this was really interesting. I just want to take a moment to shout out to the signers who signed every single event in the main space. And then because this festival is a marathon, not a sprint, and I skipped the Harana poetry, I do regret that, but I got this beautiful mushroom on toast for lunch slash breakfast from Cherry Reds and it was really good. So if you're ever in Birmingham, check out Cherry Reds. So I just wanna take a moment to talk about how beautiful Birmingham is, or at least the area that I was in. Uh, we were on the gay quarter and uh, it was just really nice. When I got back, it was too late to join the Harana Poetry event. So I actually joined in their all day poetry open mic and performed a couple of my poems, which is really cool. What a nice addition to the day. Right, welcome to the stage. This is Josie Alford, everyone in. Woo! Oh, well done. Eyeing the mic stand and getting it right. That's amazing. I can only aspire to such technical ease with a mic stand. Um, hello, I'm Josie um, and my book is coming out with Verve uh, next month, which is really exciting. Yeah, thank you. And um, so I'm going to do a couple poems out of the book. Um, this one is called uh, Charades. And um, the reason I'm choosing to do it is because uh, this weekend uh, you might have spotted me outside with a cigarette, um, but technically I've given up. Um, and so this is a poem I wrote a couple of years ago. Um, and the first line says, I am 27 years old, but really I should just change it to whatever, whatever age I am now. So I am 29 years old and still feel the need to hide from my mother-in-law at the end of her garden. Cracking leaves behind the shed under sensible sandals as I sneak a lighter, breathe out furtive fumes and hope she thinks that it's coming from next door, even though no one smokes round here anyway. Together, we preserve the charade that I don't know, that they know, that I know, that they know, that I smoke. I feel like a teenager again, hiding below my mum's living room window, sparking up and pretending. I no longer hide from my mum. At my dad's funeral, she caught me in my weakness. Since then, I've dropped all pretense of strength of any doubt that I am my father's daughter. But in this new family that I am yet to disappoint, I slip out, sneak behind the greenhouse, spark up and pretend to breathe easy. Thank you. The vibe was really cool as well, um, with the bookshop and uh, having Beth clickety-clack away. That was really lovely as well. So the next event we went to was um, Wayne Holloway Smith reading uh, their work in progress, which was another long poem. But let me tell you, it was vibes to listen to. Um, I have to say the way he reads really helped you understand stressed and unstressed syllables um i was talking to this with kieran hodges i didn't get a huge amount of footage of me and kieran hanging out but we did spend like the whole festival hanging out together it was really really great um but yeah we were talking about like how nice it was to the performance and yeah, one of the things that struck me is the way that Wayne reads his poems really highlights the difference between stressed and unstressed syllables, but not in a forced way, just in a sort of like very rhythmic vibe way. Um, I would definitely buy the audiobook of Wayne reading his poems. Um, it would be perfect to fall asleep to. And I don't mean that in that it's boring, but just that like soothing rhythmic vibe for sure. Then the next event, uh, which was the second to last event of the day was the Saturday headline event with Imtiaz Darker, Helen Mort and Hannah Sullivan, which was hosted by Joe Bell. I genuinely really enjoyed these event that event. It was, 
interesting and also as someone who um had heard of Imtiaz but never really engaged with her poems hearing her read them was just stunning and actually um a lot of the poems she was reading was about losing her husband and had me in tears but the fun never stopped so we went out had a little break and then came back in for the um saturday night stramash which was hosted by kevin gilday and we had poetry from a lot of scottish poets and performers and it was awesome then afterwards we went to the pub again i was really starting to feel tired at this point but it was great to socialize with people and learn more about like their career here's kieran being a cutie and also kevin had opinions on Guinness in a Carlsberg glass. That is a hate crime. <laughs> the next day I was really feeling it and I woke up kind of late but I did manage to shower and that is the important thing but I was running late so that's me looking stressed. My first event of the day was a writing workshop with Jay Gao which was all about the poetics of trees which genuinely was quite interesting. The reason I wanted to go to that one was because uh, when I write about nature, I tend to write about the sea. Um, you'll see this from my upcoming book, which will be out very soon when you're watching this. Um, even on the front cover, it centers the sea. I always argue that my entire poetry collection takes place on a beach. So uh, challenging myself to write about trees was really fun. So thank you, Jay, for a really fun and informative uh, workshop. My next event of the day was the 100 Queer Poems event, which is 100 Queer Poems is an anthology of writers, like contemporary writers and historical, poetic writers. Um, and, you know, they talked a little bit about what makes a queer poem. An excellent event that included a wide variety of performers, including one who zoomed in from America, which was really nice. And I just want to take a moment to like shout out Verve for really showing how you can make a truly accessible event because all of the events were live streamed. We had signers and we had people zooming in from America, which was just awesome. Also, I'm pretty sure that you can get all these events on catch up. So if you want to do that, I'll make sure there's a link in the description where you can buy the link. Um, you can buy a ticket uh, to the catch up event and watch all of them as well, which you don't, totally should. I did it last year and just spent a week just hanging out and watching poems. It was great. I also made some really cool friends. I want to take a moment here to make some to shout out to all the friends I made at the festival. I was really nervous about going by myself, even though I'm pretty outgoing. Um, you always worry that you're just not going to make friends and spend the whole weekend alone, but that wasn't the case. So I made friends with Daniel and um, who is an awesome poet from Lancaster, and I hung out with. Um, Kieran a lot that weekend which was awesome but I also made friends with Elle who is an English literature and creative writing student at um, UOB Birmingham and we hung out and she also had some pretty nice things to say about me. So just say to me what you just said earlier. I don't believe for a fact that this lovely woman here is turning 30. She's 23. <laughs> I've, I've had enough. I'm done. <laughs> Then we went into the show, which was Imogen Sterling's um, Love the Sinner. Uh, she's written a collection um, which she is turning into a theatre show, which comes with like EDM music and stuff like that. This was sort of like the last show before she turned it into a full-blown theatre show. This was like more book tour than show, but she did have... Um, a DJ with her like doing the music and stuff it was amazing it was really cool I love the concept of the seven deadly sins um you know in a contemporary but fictional Glasgow just awesome uh definitely worth checking out um and keep an eye out for her because that that show is going to be awesome I definitely can't wait to see it um hopefully it will come to Bristol so I can catch that <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
After that, we had a half hour break and then it was back in for the Burning Eye Showcase. It was Bridget's last event as editor of Burning Eye. So that's pretty, pretty sad. And um, we're going to miss them quite a lot. But onto the event, which was just bloody incredible. We had performances from poets that were um, published by Burning Eye in 2020. 2022 which was their 10th year and it was really cool to see and like the spoken word vibes were there everyone was incredible and it was really nice the whole event was really cool for seeing what um could be done with spoken word as well so thank you burning eye for that <laughs> and then the final event was the Sunday night headliner with performances from Jenny Mitchell, Gregory Ledbetter and Sophia Canal. But they had the Q&A as usual at the end. And all of these writers had written about grief, so I had a question for them. Um, and my question is, how has your grief influenced your poetry? And in turn, how has your poetry influenced your grief? The answers were really interesting. Um, Jenny uh, chose not to answer and I really respect her for that. <laughs> she was just like, yeah, I don't want to answer this. So like ask the boys. And I was like, fair play, look after your health. We love that. Uh, yeah, I don't know why she didn't want to answer. She didn't say, I respect it. Thank you, let's move on. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, particularly the second part of it, how has, um, how has the poetry affected the grief? Uh, um, yeah, I think I, I don't write into grief. I don't think I'm going to write about grief. So say the poem I read at the end about my mum dying in the hospital in Hereford. That I thought was going to be about language. I thought it was going to be about the fact that the first words I heard were in Arabic into my right ear. And I thought that's what I was going to write about. And what came up as I wrote it was that a memory of being on the hospital bed with my mum and I said to her, I think the last time we would have been in the hospital together was when I was born. And she she must have had her wits about her because she said, big head, because she couldn't say very much. But um, it was a difficult <laughs> birth. And, 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 and suddenly that came up. And then and before, and when I finished the poem, I was kind of wobbling uh, because I wasn't expecting it. And so the grief is there, really. Grief is there, and so it will come up, you know, and that's the way I would approach. I, I don't think I'm going to write about, you know, the same way I met my father yesterday. You, know, you, meet, you meet your grief in poems, and you meet them in life. Um, and how has my poems affected my grief? They've, they've helped, and see that poem I hold now, and usually I don't read it <laughs> feeling the emotions because I'm here, I, I, I really felt it actually. Um, and, but yeah, usually I see it as a piece of art that, and that's different, isn't it? That's, it's like a handle. Um, yeah, yes. Thank you. Greg? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I feel quite similarly. I think it, it will find a, a way out, you know, uh, in any, you know, you, you think you start off writing about something and, th and then it, something else emerges. I mean, what, what happened with, for example, the, the material on my, my father, I, I, I'd not been able to write about it when I was going through the experience of seeing him go through vascular dementia, which is nightmarish. Uh, um, and um, so, so but, I, but I'd got these, I don't know, snippets would kind of go just a phrase or an image and I did just I did have the I don't know I just uh, I keep a notebook in it anyway so I just sort of these bits and bobs sort of came out of that during the experience and then um, it was only after he died that I could even begin to sort of think about writing something on that so um, and then uh, and then funny thing happened I started to feel the window of opportunity close I thought if I'm going to do this at all it needs to come now otherwise I'm not it's not going to come mm. and I don't know what it was that I felt in relation to that but 
I felt that quite strongly. So I thought, okay, yeah. And so I went back to those bits and scraps and and just started to to work with what was there. Um, and yeah, I, I think, you know, the writing, you know, that then, bit, what the poem that's produced, you know, which is something for other people as much as yourself, in my case, you know, um, the poem that's produced then um, reads back at you and does something to you and, and conditions your consci consciousness, you know. So, so in that sense, I think it does become this sort of other voice that then, you know, and sometimes a soothing voice, um, sometimes, a, sometimes a reminder, sometimes like a conscience. Um, so, you know, I love that thing with where Hamlet's father you know, it's haunting and it says, I come to wet thy already blunted purpose. That's always going on in my mind. I've always got a <laughs> blunted purpose. Um, so, so yeah, you know, so there's that thing that it comes back, comes back to you and it, and it colours your, your modes of apprehension, I suppose. Yeah, thank you. And just a final shout out to the signers who were just incredible for the whole event. Like they worked so hard. BSL, it's not like a word for word translation of English, right? There's not always a sign for each word. Um, and even like the grammar of BSL is different to the grammar of English. So the act of translation is a real creative act because you sort of choose how you are going to translate each sentence. And it's particularly interesting in poetry when, you know, the word placement and the particular words are so key um and i think this act of translation that happens with bsl is really interesting um and that is why by the way poets that is why if you're going to be performing at an event which is bsl interpreted you will be asked to send the poems you intend to read or perform ahead of time and the reason is is so that the bsl can interpreter can spend time with your poems and learn and have a think about how they're going to sort of translate and essentially perform your poem um so if you don't send that ahead of time not only are you um not not only are you not giving yourself an opportunity to share your poem in a new medium in the best way possible um but also you're just not helping the event to be as accessible as possible so if you are being booked to perform at an event and they've asked you to send your poems uh send your poems and don't change up your set at the last minute don't be an obed do it right and so i uh totally forgot to film after the event but i went to a chinese round the corner and had myself a uh, noodle soup which was delicious and I went to bed at 10. That was the first time I'd gone to bed before midnight the whole festival and let me tell you I slept like an absolute bloody dream. The next day I got up I had my um had my breakfast as usual and I got to work on uh just general admin stuff and preparing for my book launch which is on Friday. Ah! And once I was done, I walked back through Birmingham uh, to get my coach home in the evening. I just want to say, like, I spent a lot of time in Birmingham. This was the first time I'd spent a decent amount of time there rather than just driving up and back for a poetry event. Um, I really enjoyed spending time there. I thought the people that I met were really lovely. And I definitely want to spend more time in Birmingham going forward. So, yeah, that's the vlog. Um... Let me know what you think. This is obviously something very different for my channel. So comment down below what you thought about it. Also, if you were at the festival, what was your favorite event? If you weren't at the festival, which event do you think you would check out? Um, and yeah, thanks so much, Verv. I'll see you next year. Don't forget to like this video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. The engagement really helps small creators like me get found. And while we're on the subject, you can support the channel by joining me on Patreon or uh, buying me a coffee. But the most important way that you can support me right now is by buying a book um, or joining me for my book launch. This event will be live streamed, so you don't have to be in Bristol to be at the event. You can join on... 
you can join online. Online tickets are £3, but if you want to pay me more, you absolutely can. And the links to do all of that are in the description. Please do join me. It's going to be really exciting. And yeah. Okay, thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you all next week. Bye.